Hi everyone, today I'm joined with Lau Yinmei, Group Chief Marketing and Customer Experience Officer at Malaysia Airlines. Thank you so much for joining me, Yinmei. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jess, for having me. No problem. Just um, starting straight off with the questions then. Could you describe the ways you position customer experience at the centre of your model? Well, um, actually, Jess, with Malaysia Airlines, or rather even at the group level, uh, which is Malaysia Aviation Group, uh, we actually have six beliefs, uh, one of which is customer is the centre of gravity. And that's literally being pushed through every single level and across every single department, division and unit all across the entire group. Um, the reason this has been put in place is because, because we know and we want to put our priority in the customers and everything that we do, it's around the customers themselves. Let me give you an example. Um, you know, historically, everybody used to think customer centricity is only the focus of the frontliner, right? And so in, in, in an airline, is the, in, in terms of the cabin crew, you know, or the ground crew or the boarding gate crew, but actually that is so not true. The fact is customer centricity is something that every single person in the entire organization needs to be obsessed about right uh, throughout the entire journey right because it's like um, the engineers who are in the hangar way away from the pet customers but they are fixing say the, the the screen the sit back screens that play the in-flight entertainment now that effort itself is really really important because what he's doing is he's providing the entertainment for that customer for say for our flights from Kuala Lumpur to London 13 hours, right? And he must do it right because if he does not do it right, that customer, that passenger who sits in that seat will not get an entertainment for 13 hours. So, you know, the likes of our baggage handlers, you know, our ground handlers, even our caterers, right? Um, so not just across the staff, the employees of Malaysia Airlines, but with our partners, with our vendors, we make sure that we instill this belief that customer is a sense of gravity. Now, it's, it's one thing to have it in a practice, right? That everything we do must be based on what the customer wants, but we also track and also report the results of it in terms of the customer satisfaction index. We call it the CSI. Now, we track this for every flight that, that takes off uh, and on a monthly basis, the CSI is reported for all the touch points and we have a target for each touch point and, and at any time, we monitor why has it gone up, has it gone down, and if, especially if it's gone down, what did we do wrong? And this is where we engage with the respective business units and make sure that improvements will be underway to be able to fix it immediately for the next month. Yeah, so because, you know, when somebody flies, especially in an airline, um, it, it has this uh, handover uh, from one unit to another for at least 10 to 15 different units. Uh, across the uh, one passenger journey. So that handover must be absolutely smooth, absolutely seamless, so that our customers and our passengers will, what, will enjoy what we call a Malaysian hospitality when they fly with Malaysia Airlines. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So I think we'll we'll return back to the idea of sort of culture a little bit later. But just on that, is there, would you be able to give me some examples of the touch points? Because like you mentioned, it's so important creating a seamless journey and there are so many stages of crossover in the journey. Yeah. So with us, uh, we have established key 10 touch points. There are 10 touch points that we monitor. And this is not just when our passengers uh, come on board. You know, Again, historically, everybody thinks that the engagement starts when somebody steps on board, but no, with us, we take it even way before that. When somebody say comes onto our website or opens up our app, right? And that is one touch point where we monitor, you know, to ensure that the user experience, the UX is really smooth and someone is able to do and complete their booking in no more than five different pages. Now that's one touch point. We also have our contact center as one of our key touch points. And the moment our passengers arrive at the airport, Check-in is one touch point, and one of our most prime uh, touch point would be our lounges. Uh, we are a premium airline, so we provide uh, lounge access, and of course, also for during boarding, it's a boarding process, right? That needs to be smooth as well, just before they step on board. Now, when one steps on board, uh, we look at 
four different touch points. And that encompasses, first and foremost, our staff, because that's Malaysian hospitality. Um, secondly, it's our food uh, in-flight uh, uh, offerings, our food and beverages. And then we have a, the cabin comfort and cleanliness. And last but not least, the in-flight entertainment, right? And then the moment passenger steps on, uh, arrives at destination, arrival is also one touch point, which is very important for us, for us because that, the sweet, that's the end of the journey and we yeah. must make sure that every single touch point goes through very smoothly. So imagine imagine you had a great uh, experience throughout the first nine touch points, right? But the moment you arrive, something happens and that, that kind of disturbed your entire journey. So that's not what we want to achieve. We want to make sure that we achieve all touch points, providing a positive, very memorable experience for all our passengers. Wonderful. That's great. So you touched a little bit on the sort of evolution of that. One of the big steps in um, recent evolution, I guess you could say, has been COVID and its sort of transformative impact. How are you responding to change in passenger expectations since the pandemic? Well, we all know, in a way, airlines and aviation has known to be highly resilient, right? Um, we've had SARS, we had 9-11, yeah, we had the economic crisis and so on. But then again, when you compare against COVID, um, these crises prior to that were nothing compared to COVID. Uh, COVID literally grounded, what, 95% of our flights. Of course, we continue to fly uh, the essential flights, yeah, but literally it, it, it halted everything uh, for the airlines industry. And unlike, example, like the stars, uh, it was kind of only about eight months or so, right? But COVID, as you know, um, some of the countries now, up to today, after two and a half years, almost three years, is still still have their borders closed. Yeah, so it's it's really stretching very far. However, for us, we always say there's always opportunity in every crisis. Yeah, so I think this kind of thing has brought us to be a, a lot more. Agile, it has taught us to be highly uh, quick to respond uh, to changes in the market. So one of the key things that it has helped us to accelerate our digital transformation as well. Uh, prior to COVID, we had, of course, our digital transformation pathway. But when COVID hit us, we literally said, we need this to be done in the next one month. Yeah, And there was no excuses at all. So that kind of accelerated our digital uh, innovations. So now we actually see a lot of uh, a lot of the journey, a lot of interaction with our passengers are, are automated, uh, a lot of self-serve because that's literally what the customers are asking for. And even though uh, no one really flew on uh, over during the pandemic, except for those essential flights, we continue to make it a point that we engage with our customers out there. Yeah, so this was also one of the times, the first time we ever introduced for the entire history of Malaysia Airlines uh, focus group that's done online. Yeah, it was what we call EFGD, right? So we hold this on a quarterly basis with our mem our our passengers and our loyal uh, loyalty members, right? Trying to understand, you know, whether they are, have their perceptions changed, you know, whether their behaviors and preferences have changed as well. Because at the end of the day, uh, we want to be ready with, when they are ready to fly and we have the products which are ready uh, to cater to their needs and uh, uh, preferences, yeah. So That's great. having said that, uh, we, we actually learned, we know that customers, our customers wanted two key things, right? Uh, they wanted flexibility, right? They also wanted convenience, yeah? Uh, so we've introduced a lot of flexibility, uh, not just in terms of booking methods, yeah? They could, we also introduced a lot of uh, pay now, uh, buy now, pay later uh, programs, Right. And across, not just in Malaysia, but of course, because we are a global airline, we actually introduce it at all our POSs. Right. We've also introduced a lot of options where you could change uh, your tickets or you can manage your, your, your bookings uh, online on app. So that literally gives them control at their fingertips. Yeah. And just a couple of months back, we launched a self-reporting of baggage, um, uh, mishandled baggage. So again, this is because a lot of our passengers say, you know, and some, some of them still try to refrain from a lot of physical interaction. So they could actually do any reporting of bag mishandled baggage online. 
uh, via this this self serve uh, reporting mechanism that we have introduced. That's really interesting. So I think one of the themes we have been seeing a lot is that sort of putting control back into the customer's hands, and that's sort of coming hand in hand with the digital acceleration. And um, and just uh, just another point on that was also you spoke about how um, the digitization process was accelerated by COVID for you as an airline, but I think we've also seen it for customers as well. They've they've been engaging much more digitally than they ever have, and um, sort of e-commerce during the pandemic it's just sort of accelerated that whole process. Well, speaking of which, actually, Jess, when you mentioned e-commerce, uh, think get this right. We also built our own e-commerce during the pandemic. Um, we launched, yeah, so a lot of people like airlines coming up with an e-commerce platform and we did, yeah. we literally did that uh, and we launched it in 2021. Um, so it was a very quick um, in, a development that we had done. So in 2021, we launched uh, Journeyfy. It's an e-commerce that has, of course, it's, it's a lifestyle and travel related. So you're able to say discover places in your backyard. You could also plan your itineraries and of course you could do shopping. Uh, on on our e-commerce as well. That's so interesting. Yeah. Wow. So I guess, that's a very I mean, that, quick that, turnaround as well. Yeah, that's about, you know, I guess we, we learn that we need to be very, very agile. We need to pivot as and when needed. And like you said, when, when the consumers out there have changed their behaviours, they've changed their, the way they, they, they consume our products, right? So we need to make sure that we are also at par uh, with that and we are able to develop products that suit their requirements. Yeah, that's yeah? great, thank you. So moving just um, slightly away from that topic, this year you put a fun twist on your in-flight safety videos. Can you give another example of creative ways you're improving customer experience and engagement or give more detail on that for our watchers? Yeah, so that was um, the first ever done in the history of Malaysia Airlines. Uh, we did uh, this um, safety video in a very different manner. It was a joint collaboration with the local performing arts industry. And actually, there's a little bit more history to that, Jess. Um, we actually realized that while well, airline was one of the last or the worst hit industries uh, due to the pandemic, the other industry that suffered tremendously is the performing arts industry because they also couldn't, there was no production work, there was no theatre work, there was none, right, I, until only very much recently that they started back some of this work. So we thought, let these two most worst hit industry players get together, you know, and do something, right? So I think it all started, it was an insta, internal brainstorm uh, that started this idea, and we managed to engage one of our local production team, and we said, yeah, let's do this, something different, because we also wanted to highlight um, the, the, the Malaysians' uh, personalities who really have made Malaysia proud because we, we are the national carrier, right? We, we want to, we, our job is to bring the name of Malaysia worldwide. And a lot of our personalities, a lot of our achievers in Malaysia have also done the same. They brought the name of Malaysia out to the world. We wanted to give our recognition to these icons uh, of Malaysia and at the same time, we wanted to brighten everybody's mood. Yeah, uh, everybody, there was a lot of gloom and doom uh, throughout the pandemic, but we realized, look, we are coming out of it. We need to instill the excitement. We need to have something that brightens up everybody's day, you know, and that was the reason why that safety video was done in that manner. Yeah, I hope it kind of lifted uh, 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 your, your spirit when you saw that because you got some rest some, some pretty good response from our, our passengers when they saw they said, hey, this is really uplifting, you know, and that was, I mean, we are, we're kind of glad that it, 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 it did achieve what it intended to do, yeah. So during the pandemic, we, we also, this is just one of the examples that we literally changed the way we work. Um, we went through a very, very um, difficult financial restructuring and we were successful in that and with that, in brief, we literally shifted our financial position to a much stronger position right now, uh, and that makes us a lot more competitive. Yeah, uh, we have also done 
uh, introduce a lot of new products uh, catered to the new segments and to new behaviors of consumers, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the likes of MH Explorer. It is a digital program mainly just for students because now we know students are one of the markets that's coming back uh, into travel. Yeah, we also have upgraded our corporate programs, our MHBiz Pro and our MHBiz Plus, to be able to cater to the requirements of our corporate clients uh, as we move out from the pandemic. Now, another thing that we've done was literally um, on Malaysia Airlines, uh, we used to serve our signature satay and our signature peanut. Uh, only on flight, yeah. And during the pandemic, we literally brought down this signature, uh, what we call signature satay and signature peanuts on ground, and we actually allowed people to enjoy that uh, at the comfort of their homes. Oh, yeah, that's so lovely. Yeah, I think um, that's that's such a lovely idea that it's the two worst or potentially worst um, hit industries collaborating to create something nice and something to sort of brighten everyone's day. And um, just, yeah, that's a really interesting area of collaboration because I think we have seen um, airlines in the aviation industry collaborating with new new industries. And that's a, yes. that's a sort of innovative one that I hadn't heard so much about. So thank you for explaining a bit more about that there. No problem. Um, just sort of developing on the idea of culture, what role would you say culture plays in your marketing? You've mentioned a sort of few um, aspects here and there, but if you could just elaborate. Um, I think for, for me, culture is the one most important strength um, that, that underpins um, the success of an organisation um, because it is something that depicts the behaviour, uh, the attitude of the staff, and so just remember, I mentioned about uh, one of the belief was customer is our sense of gravity. Uh, another belief that we strongly hold on to is people is our true norm. And by people, we mean our own staff, right? Because we believe that it is our staff that will make or break uh, and give success to the organization. And what underpins that and one that binds everybody together is this culture. Yeah. And through, through the pandemic, uh, it's also helped us to be highly agile, which I mentioned before. But I think one lesson that we learned was, um, you know, when the pandemic hit the, the entire world, remember if you're back in 2020, a lot of airlines started letting go of staff. Um, clearly, and, this, and understandably, because there was no flying at all. Yeah. Uh, but what happened with Malaysia Aviation Group is we did not have any retrenchment. We didn't lay off any staff. The reason is because we believe that all of us need to stand in unity. So instead, we actually took pay cut um, from, from a certain level and up all the way up to our group CEO, we took a pay cut so that we could sustain each and every single job uh, every single one of us in, 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 in our jobs. Yeah, giving you an example, um, our great gracious pilots, they took a pay cut as high as 65%. And that was to be able to help and keep everyone else in their jobs. You know, But what we realized was this came in as a blessing, right? When, when there was recovery, um, where we hear other airlines struggling to get uh, manpower, there was a lot of manpower shortage issues that we're hearing, even up to today, yeah, but thankfully, we didn't have that issue because we didn't lay off any staff, but instead, the staff were anxiously so excited to be coming back to work, you know, to be, and, and they came back feeling a lot more closer and a lot more knitted together in unity because they know that we have gone through we all of us have gone through the pandemic as one and that just made us a lot more stronger as a company per se so that kind of culture is what will make a difference um, and that is what we are continuously working on uh, to 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 instill in each and every one of us and not just the existing but also the new staff to join us I'd say that's such a wonderful thing that you all did together. That's really lovely to hear. And also, I think we have seen a real difference in the ability to restart since the pandemic, like you said, in um, airlines who either, as you say, understandably had to um, 
let staff go versus the ones who managed to retain them and it's just the sort of rescaling of everything after the pandemic has yeah. been so it's such a different experience across these airlines and That's I fantastic. think there were also questions to say you know so so what did your staff do during the the, the, the pandemic right um we actually got into a program called MH Agile. Again, it is to reskill and upskill the existing staff because we know that, you know, like we said, we know how digitalization is going to be one of the key priorities, right? So we started this massive digital training for all our staff, you know, literally again to get them ready and to prepare them to be future proof, you know, the moment operations come back. So and they were it was it was a very successful program because some of our say our pilots or even our cabin crew who didn't fly at that time, they came to try out other departments as part of this MH Agile program. And they realized that, hey, that's something that I like to do. And they literally, after that, just shifted and, and changed into the new roles. That's wonderful. So using that yeah. time as constructive as well as, um, so like you said, you sort of had a restructuring in the airline as well. That's that's so lovely to hear. Just um, looking forward to Singapore now. What are you looking forward to at the Aviation Festival Asia? Well, um, this Aviation Festival Asia that will happen in February next year, uh, it will be a very good time for all of us to take stock as what happened in 2022, right? I think, I believe at that time, most of the countries would already have opened their borders for at least six to nine months. And I think we would already have seen how the trends have shifted and also at the same time to see whether the inflation and the so-called forecasted recession, how, how, how much impact that would be or that would have in the aviation industry. Yeah, yeah. I think that gives us the opportunity to say, look, let's, let's look back and analyze how has last year been? Has it been a, a, a temporary uh, trend or has it already gone to a stabilized uh, position and what are we looking forward to and what are the consumer trends then for us to be able to continu continuously be able to address and also meet our customers expectations. That's wonderful. And, well, I look and of course it's also as always to reconnect to everybody in the industry. Yeah of course. Well, um, I really look forward to meeting you there. Thank you so much for joining me today. Great. I look forward to it too. And I look forward to meeting you there too, Jess.